Hi, this is Bea, and today I want to go through the various workflows that are available to you as a remote editor with GV Stratus and Edius. There are different situations in which you may need to do remote editing, so let's have a quick look at some of those. Remember that we're talking about field editing. You may be an editor with your Edius workstation in a hotel, working in the field, based at a remote location, or maybe you're just in a cafe, whether connected or disconnected to the internet. Maybe you're first disconnected, then you start editing, then you connect over to the rest of the remote destinations or locations. Now, there are different levels or tiers of remote editing. The first one I want to talk to you about is using Edius Elite to transfer K2 content via FTP. The second situation, you may have a multi-site Stratus license, which allows you to transfer content from the Stratus production facility over to your local workstation for Edius editing. The number three layer would be that one where you still use a multi-site Stratus license, but you do not transfer content to your local workstation. You actually edit with the low resolution content as a proxy stream via wide area network. And we'll show you each of those step by step. So let's have a quick look at number one. So here's my Edius Elite. As you know, there is a tab down here called the Source Browser, which allows me to configure a number of K2 destinations or sources as FTP devices. So here I'm connected to actually three different K2 SANs. It could be a Summit, it could be a K2 Solo, and I can see I've got London, Hillsborough, Singapore, and I can see the contents of each of those SANs remotely. I am connected to the internet, and let's say this is the video that I want to use. I just select it and transfer it to my bin. At this point what happens is that an FTP transfer begins of course depending on the speed and the busyness of your network you will have access to that content sooner or later and now I can even start using some of that content already so I'm just gonna mark an in point and obviously as I reach the point where it's still transferring I will get this line that shows me that I'm still in progress so mark an in and an out point over here and start editing with that content now and when that is completed then I I'll be able to use the whole of that clip. Now what's happening here is that there is a physical transfer of media from that remote K2 source, that K2 SAN in Singapore, over to my local workstation here with my Edius Elite. Now the second thing that I could do, remember, is let's say I have a Stratus license, a multi-site license that allows me to log on to the Stratus system, so I'm going to do this. So remember, I'm in a hotel, but I have very good connectivity to the rest of the world, and I'm going to connect to the Stratus production facility over in Singapore. I'm going to search for that clip, New GV, and I'm able to actually see that remotely as well. I'm able to actually stream that as a video over so that I don't have to blindly choose the content. I can just mark an in point and, for example, subclip only part of that instead of transferring the whole video I just want to say mark in, mark out, I'm going to create a subclip and I'm going to put it in the same destination and over here and I'm going to say sub. And when that subclip is created, if I go back to the source browser, I'll be able to find that subclip over here, which is shorter, considerably shorter than the original material, and I can add that to my bin again, and now I have a much quicker clip that I wanted to use for my edit. So that's tier number two, remember? So we've done number one, we've done number two. Let's have a quick look at tier number three, where you have a multi-site license and you want to edit via wide area network. So let's go through that step by step. What we're talking about here is a multi-site license with wide area network editing. It means you don't need to move files around, you can edit directly with the content that lives physically at the remote location in the main production facility where GV Stratus is running. So the remote content is streamed via proxy over to you, to your local workstation via HTTP caching, standard internet protocol. No need to upload content to the cloud before using it. The proxy content that is created when you create new files in GV Stratus is available to you when you are a remote client based in the field. Thanks to the codec agility in the editor and our conform server, we're able to work with this exact same proxy without having to create an additional type of proxy for remote workflows. Once you finish editing, you can send back to the remote side. And this is a little bit what it will look like. 
I am the remote editor, I'm based in my hotel, in the field, and I've just recorded some really interesting full rest editing footage, and I want to start editing right away. So you could edit either connected to the internet or disconnected at this point, and then at some point, once you connect to the rest of the world, you will be able to proxy video stream from the station, from the main production facility where Stratus and K2R is situated. Now, you may have a timeline that looks a little bit like that. In your ADS Elite, you will have local content from your HD footage mixed together with low resolution proxy from the remote facility. Once you finish editing, you can send the story back to the station and either you can choose to conform it, in which case the proxy that you use is replaced with high resolution content, or you can choose not to conform it, then it's sent as a timeline for a colleague to finish it off back at the station, or you can send directly to play out. And here's how it would actually happen in terms of rendering and conforming. You will have a timeline that will look a little bit like this with a mixture of full resolution clips and a proxy stream from the production facility. Once you finish your edit, you have a number of choices. If you consider that you have completely finished and it's ready for on air, once you send it to the facility, there is a render and conform process that is actually done by the GV Stratus Conform and render engine. And what happens is that is conformed into H.264, 12 megabytes per second for speed over the one. Or you may choose not to conform so that the edit can be finished at the station. So the first thing that happens is a render and a conform or not conform and then finally the transfer. Ultimately, if you have finished your edit and you, you chose to conform it, what you will end up with back at the Stratus facility and on your K2 is a fully conformed finished clip. So back on my EDIUS Elite, and I want to mix content both from my local workstation and the production facility. So we've been on location recording some rushes for a fitness video, and we're just going to start grabbing some content. Remember, this is on my local desk, local workstation only. And I'm going to grab some content and start editing very quickly over here, mark an in point, mark an out point it and add that to my uh, timeline and of course I can add some effects voiceover transitions as I need to but at this point let's say I'm done with all of that and I want to add a bumper at each end my colleagues in the graphics design team have been working on a bumper back at the facility ready for me to use here and there it is uh, I have a nice bumper that I can actually stream and have a look before I uh, bring into my edit here now, at this point, rather than actually wanting to copy that content to my local workstation, all I want to do is stream it, bring it over to my source window, there it is, and remember, I'm actually not making a physical copy here, I'm just bringing the content, mark an in point, mark an out point, or just bring the whole bumper over here and do that again over here. I'm actually streaming this as a proxy via HTTP. You may notice a difference in color in this timeline. I have solid color where I'm using local content. If you take a look, that looks very high resolution, good quality. And where I'm taking content back from the Strata system, if I take a look at that, I can see that it's low resolution content. It's a proxy copy of that. And, and it's actually been streamed over to me, so I don't have to spend any time making local copies of that content. Now, once I'm happy that I've got the timeline that I need, all I need to do is press the F11 button in EDIUS. This allows me to choose my destination where I'm going to send the final edit to. So you have, as you know, a whole list of choices within uh, EDIUS, but uh, in this case, we're going to be sending back to the uh, production facility, to Stratus, to the newsroom, to whatever it is that my colleagues are working in the remote facility. You have a choice of conforming or not conforming your content, and I'll explain the difference. And I'm going to make sure that in this case, I do engage the conform engine. The conform engine is physically at the production facility back at base. The next thing that happens is I get this send destinations window. This is uh, coming from Stratus. You can pre-configure all of your send destinations and you can send to more than one uh, simultaneously. 
And here I have the choice to send my final edit as a conformed final clip, means that as I explained earlier, all of the different parts are rendered together and a final flattened file is created. Or if I want somebody else to add maybe an additional effect, maybe to, to, to revise the content, change some of my timeline, rather than conforming, I can choose to send that as a non-conform edit sequence. But in this case, I'm all done and I'm going to say crunches bumper. When I hit the send button, two things are going to happen. The first one is, Edius is going to start rendering the content, any effects, and making a physical copy of this portion of the media, the media that is local to my workstation, is copying that across the wide area network onto the K2 storage back at base. The second thing that's going to happen is that the project is going to get closed automatically by Edius so that it can hand it over to the render engine back at base. So here you go, you can see how the project has been closed off and I can of course continue to work on another project or open it again at this point. I'm just going to minimize this window so I, I don't need it for now. What's happening in the meantime back at base is that the render engine, and uh, let me just quickly open the monitoring tool, this will allow me to see how my uh, render is progressing and how it's being conformed. Remember, we are creating a timeline initially that has small gaps where I use the remote content. Remember the content that I use from the facility, the bumper at the beginning and at the end. That will not be transferred, but it will be conformed back at base by the render engine. And not only that, but even before it's completed, I can do a quick search in Stratus and I'll be able to see here is the crunches bumper and I can double click on that and I can already start viewing how far has, has it been transferred conform and almost finished. So even during the transfer, even during the progress, which is now completed, my colleagues like a base can start working with that file, searching for it, browse it, and even play it on air because remember, K2 servers can certainly play growing files. So you don't need to wait for the whole thing to be transferred and completed. And that completes all of the three field editing case studies we wanted to show you today. First one, ADS Elite transferring content via FTP, no need for Stratus. The second one is where you use Stratus to preview the content first and then subclip transfer only that portion. Finally, the most integrated workflow with ADS Elite and multi-site license from Stratus where you can do wide area network editing. No need to transfer files, you can stream the proxy over to your local workstation and edit with the load resolution.